Solar Impulse 2 is the most advanced solar-powered airplane ever designed, able to fly long distances day and night. With the help of global insurance specialists at Swiss Re Corporate Solutions, the team are attempting a groundbreaking flight around the world. This is the story of how teamwork, dedication and shared values can change the future. Solar Impulse is the result of the education I had in my family about scientific adventures and exploration that are useful for society. The Picard family name is synonymous with pushing the boundaries of scientific knowledge through pioneering feats of adventure. Bertrand's father, Jacques Picard, famously conquered the deepest parts of the ocean in his submarine, the Trieste. Years earlier, Bertrand's grandfather, Auguste Picard, driven by a curiosity to reach the Earth's upper atmosphere, broke the record for the highest altitude flight in his specially designed balloon. It was Auguste who said, exploration is the sport of the scientist. This is the spirit that Bertrand Bicard carries forward with the help and support of global insurance specialist Swiss Re Corporate Solutions. During the balloon flight around the world I did in 1999, for the entire flight, I was afraid of being short of fuel. When I landed, there were 40 kilos left. And this is the moment where I made the promise that the next time I would fly around the world, it would be with no fuel. Bertrand Picard joined forces with pilot and businessman Andre Borschberg to help lead the project. I'm a medical doctor, a psychiatrist, an explorer, a balloonist. Andre is an engineer, entrepreneur, jet fighter pilot. Together, we are so complementary, and our differences help us to be creative and inventive. When I was a child, I dreamed about aviation. I did my first solo flight when I was 15. I got my uh, pilot license when I was 17. Uh, I was fascinated by the pioneers, the people who invented airplanes. To have the chance to be part of this uh, project brought me to the time of my childhood. Swiss Re Corporate Solutions partnered with Solar Impulse to support the project as it worked towards the launch of the first solar flight around the world. It's quite nice to know that the airplane is insured by Swiss Re Corporate Solutions and that if we ditch, we can make a new airplane and try again. I first heard about Solar Impulse when I was approached by Bertrand Picard and I had a business lunch with him at Swiss Re in Zurich. He told us what Solar Impulse was about. I was fascinated by the idea and the project. Solar Impulse is looking for an, a creative insurer and that's what we are. The fact of having an insurer as very important partner is for us a safety and it also reassures a lot of other people outside. If the plane is insurable, it means we are not their devils. We're not crazy. I think Bertrand came to us because uh, he knew we're the only insurance company that can provide this kind of insurance solutions. We are very proud to be your new partner. Thank you very much. Complex projects are brought to Swiss Re because we have the reputation of being a knowledge company. Swiss Re has a, a strong history of backing innovative projects. Uwe Dam was built with the help of Swiss Re. Today, Crossrail in London, the infrastructure around Shanghai is built with the help of insurers and Swiss Re behind them. This project was uh, unique in combining adventure, innovation and also complexity. I'm personally very proud that Swiss Re is the sole insurance provider for this wonderful project. Solar Impulse has a great potential. I think it is contributing to a better world. Swiss Re is not a sponsor, it's a partner. And Solar Impulse is a tool that transports our common values. In 2003, the Solar Impulse team began their journey to turn their idea into a reality. Well, a lot of people told us that it was impossible. If people tell you it's possible, it means you're not ambitious enough. To fight for an idea, to find the way to transform this idea into reality, it's the kind of situation I really enjoy. It's really a project at the edge of feasibility. The airplane size is dictated by the solar energy. We have to have a big surface. On the other side, you have to have a super light weight. The airplane had to be very big. In fact, the wingspan of a 747, but also at the same time, very light, and the weight of a family car, but having the power of a small motorcycle. 
This airplane is completely different to any aircraft for many reasons. You can fly during the day. At the same time, you can fill up the battery. So more you fly, more energy you have available. So it's crazy, because normally it's just the other way around. This airplane needs the sunshine during the day to run the four electrical motors and charge the battery. So we can fly at night, reach the next sunrise, recharge the batteries with the new sunrise and continue. When we met in Zurich, Bertrand told me that they were struggling in finding insurance coverage. It is not easy to insure a prototype because insurers typically need experience, statistics, and so on, and that's something which is not available for prototypes. Prototype risk is not the normal risk. How that plane is going to perform in real life, we do not know. So it's more difficult to make an assessment of what the risk quality is. We have 70 engineers in the group, and uh, these engineers, they have a huge background in terms of uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, chemical engineering, and that industrial knowledge, that's what we apply in the underwriting process. I think companies uh, like to, to come to Swiss Re with these type of projects, really because we have that technical approach, we have that engineering background that really allows us to get to grips with the technologies involved, get comfortable with that, and then that really leads into the insurance product. We changed our underwriting process for this special plane because it's not comparable to anything else. If you look at this uh, team of solar impulse engineers and technicians, they have done testing, they have done human performance assessment. That's what we would then call a positive risk, a good risk. Swiss Re Corporate Solutions is a very efficient company. When nobody knew how to insure this airplane, they came with a solution. You can make a lot of improvements. In fact, you could never stop. At a certain stage, you have to say, I built this airplane, and that's what I will fly. Plane moving, media team. Okay. In the outside, you have a tailwheel lift off. To see this airplane flying for the first time was just unbelievable, incredible moment. There were moments of pure elation where we could watch that plane flying and say, wow, all this sacrifice, all these moments of doubts, they are worth it because now it's flying. Starting from people thought it's maybe not possible to have today a real safe aircraft with a complex system, this makes me proud. <laughs> <laughs> As the pilots of the plane, André Borschberg and Bertrand Picard have the success or failure of the Around the World mission in their hands. So when we designed it, there was the big question if we could fly it, if we could control it, because there is no airplane of this size, this weight, this configuration, which has ever been uh, flown. It's completely different to fly than a normal airplane. It's much bigger, much lighter. It is sensitive to turbulence. It's a mixture of airplane, helicopters, uh, gliders, and you have to integrate all this knowledge to be able to control it. So Don Patrick was climbing 4,500 feet. So this is an experimental airplane. Experimental airplane flies normally over desert. With this one, we fly over the major cities, towards the major airports, so it has to be safe. So we decided to build a simulator, something that you use to train pilots. Flying was not too bad, was not too difficult, but landing was impossible. Without the flight simulator to train, it's impossible to land with that plane normally without crashing. For André and I, it was so fun to see very experienced test pilots from America who were trying that simulator and crashing the plane each time. The three main things causing uh, plane crashes are weather, technical failure, and then human error. Two-thirds of all plane crashes are because of human error. Human error is uh, key on all the complex risks that we insure. The uh, steel industry, mining industry, oil and petrochemical industry. So we need to look at the human error factor uh, when we analyze risks. We are humans, we make errors, no matter how good our training is. So we seek constant dialogue with our clients. We might advise them also in how to upgrade their risk management procedures, how to increase the overall safety of their operations. Human error is very much influenced by stressful situation, by time pressure, by fatigue. 
So there's various factors that we look at in terms of uh, human performance. One uh, certainly is the uh, human performance integrity. So what's the, uh, the shift duration? Another one would be, are people trained uh, enough to do the job? It requires a, a thorough understanding of uh, our client's business, and that's uh, one of the key skills uh, we do have here at Swiss Re. One of the goals of today is really to monitor the pilot's health on every possible parameter as well as possible. Because you can imagine that the health problem on the ground is no fun, but the health problem in the air when you're alone in the cockpit can be a disaster. We train in the simulator three days, three nights, trying to understand how to rest, how to stay alert, how to stay focused, sleeping only 20 minutes at a time. So enough, in fact, to rest, but not too much to let the airplane just go by itself. I think everybody needs to know himself, to know his limit, and that's the main aim of this trial, is to see what are the limits of the pilot. We are performing different vigilant tests every two hours, where he has to press a button whenever a number pops up, and so it will allow us to see how his reflexes will evolve during the 72 hours. <laughs> I do quite a lot of preparation. I try to be physically fit. What I practice a lot since many years is yoga. I do it every morning. And I will use this also in the, in the cockpit itself to stay fit, to keep the blood circulation going, to re-energize myself when necessary. Well, the airplane is sustainable in terms of energy. Now the question is how to make us sustainable as well. In the adventure, you discover how much the unknown, the doubts, and the unpredictability and the question mark can stimulate your performance, can stimulate your creative behavior. It's why I like adventure. To complete the around-the-world solar flight, the team needed to demonstrate the plane could fly continuously day and night. We did only one flight through the night, up to now. The flight I did in July 2010, demonstrating that it's possible flying 26 hours. The of the, of the 26-hour flight was the demonstration that this technology works. The lowest level that we reached in batteries was 40%, 40%. With the technology now proven, the team could look ahead to the planning of the Around the World mission, preparation that would need to be cautious and meticulous in its detail. I think for both Swiss Re and Solar Impulse, cautious risk management is very crucial. When dealing with unknown future events, foresight is key. We run a horizon scanning process, so we try to pick up early signals of various developments that could become relevant for us and for our clients. If we try to anticipate what the future might bring, we have to use a certain amount of creativity. We just can't know for sure. And one thing that's certain is that the future is not a simple linear extrapolation of the past. We can nonetheless draw on past experience to help us assess the future, and we share our findings with our clients to help them understand their potential future exposures and to develop solutions together. Of the many challenges that Solar Impulse faces during the around the world flight, none is greater than the threat of adverse weather. We need to fly in calm weather, no turbulence. If we hit thunderstorms, it will be catastrophic. If the plane is hit by a lightning, it means the weathermen have really made a mistake. Hurricane, never, no, no. We had some moments of turbulence. Andre had some, I had some. It's strange when you look at your wings who are so far away from you and you start to see everything moving and you have to fight on your yoke in order to stabilize. When I flew from uh, Brussels to Paris, we were under pressure to get to the uh, Paris air show. When I took off, it was very turbulent, so I had really difficulty to keep the control of the airplane. There we learned that we have to be very careful 
And I think then we learned what was the maximum level of turbulence we should accept. Nature can be sweet and can be rough to human beings on the ground, and it's the same for us. We fly with the sun. Now if we have too much wind or too much turbulence, it becomes dangerous. We really have to plan and organize the flight very, very well. For me, that looks not like a good day to fly. Why do we fly with these high winds? In general, we are really, really conservative when it comes to weather. We have a team who are making sure they're analyzing every minute what the weather is going to be like. This is the role of the uh, mission center, is to keep this airplane in good weather. The weathermen work with engineers who make a flight strategy that can be adapted all the time on the computer and communicated to the pilot. So if we had to, to divert and take other routes or other altitudes, we are ready to do it. The weather is a very important factor in our flight planning. We have to wait for a perfect window to fly. We did thousands of simulations with recorded weather, but also we did the real-time, round-the-world flight, and I learned a lot. So the Impulse plans its flight very cautiously around the Dever. In Swiss, we use weather information to come up with solutions for clients. As an example for those solutions, you can imagine that if you're dealing with wind farms, if there is no wind, you cannot produce energy. And with our solutions, we take out that volatility. So we allow renewable energy projects to have profitability even though they, for example, have a year with little wind. And that makes those projects financeable. Solar Impulse is like the beginning of a new cycle. Maybe in 20 years, you'll have a lot of solar airplanes flying. This is possible. Today, we need calm weather. The goal is not to be there quickly. The goal is to stay in the air forever. The pilots rely on their expert mission team to stay in the air. But how do they keep the plane out of danger as it flies around the world? Without the pilot, the airplane would not fly, but without the mission team, the pilot could do nothing in his plane. Normally what you see uh, is, of course, the airplane and the pilots, but uh, the team we have to support the flight is extremely important. For one pilot, at the time in the cockpit, you have 130 people on the ground. The ground crew uh, is a group of people that handle the plane. We prepare the flight, we prepare the landing. It requires a lot of reliability and uh, uh, we, you need to trust the people. So the team spirit is very strong in the ground crew. We have a control center, which is based in uh, Monaco. This control center makes all the planning of the flights. The mission control team is composed of about 20 people. We have two roles. The first one is the planning of the flight, and then during the flight, the support of the pilot. Similarly to what we do here at Swiss Re, uh, Solar Impulse applies risk landscaping. One of the tools we are using is scenario modeling. Scenario modeling helps you create the story of, of a scenario and then we use state-of-the-art computing technology to uh, model that. In my view, Swiss Re is at the forefront of risk identification and risk mitigation measures. Understanding risks and understanding what can go wrong is essential in order to manage risks. On the last flight of the crossing of America, the wing was damaged. We had a big hole. I was really shocked by the news, so I prepared to jump out in case. That was quite a tense situation because there you don't know, uh, will more rip off, will more be damaged. You have to be super, super focused, but you're human, you know, and the heart's beating and, and, and you're sweating to death. We really had to change our plan in New York. When we learned that something was happening, I gathered the whole crew. Within 30 minutes, everybody was ready. We asked uh, GFK to allow us to land earlier than planned. The folks at Kennedy were just absolutely brilliant. Closed down the airport. And we had really tears in our eyes that he landed well. When Andre landed, it was uh, a sigh of relief, but so much tension. I ran up to him and said, don't ever do that to me again. These are people we trust. We understand each other in a very special way. We have just an amazing team. I'm proud to be part of this team. What I really enjoy is to be here with this team because everybody is different. It gives a 
wonderful synergy. Everyone says we fly on solar energy, but I think we fly on the energy of the team behind it. We see ourselves as an extension of the Solar Impulse ground crew. The aviation claims team put together claims handling procedures so everyone is aware of what their role is and who to contact in the event something unfortunate happens. We actually track the path of the Solar Impulse round the world trip so that someone's there to help them. The world is made out of people who don't dare and people who dare. In our team, we have only people who dare. My team has a shared passion behind our claims commitment and providing excellent claim service to our clients. I'm really passionate about our involvement with Solar Impulse. They're a real family, a real team, and an inspiration for all of us at Swiss Re. On the Around the World mission, Solar Impulse confronts the ultimate test of their endurance and technical abilities, crossing the vast Pacific Ocean. Once they begin this journey into the unknown, there is no going back. When we take off from one coast to cross the ocean, this is the moment where you cannot stop and you have to accept the unknown. And when you're in the middle of nothing, then you are in the adventure. When you can stop every time, it's not an adventure, it's a nice holiday trip. We plan to fly at least five days, five nights, something which was never done, sleeping only 20 minutes at a time. There is a stabilizer of the wing. It's not a real autopilot like a normal airplane. Uh, you can just switch on st stabilizing system, and then the plane flies flat during the 20 minutes where you rest. You have to imagine this cockpit here, which will be the living room, and bedroom, and dining room, and bathroom for a single pilot for five days and five nights. Well, the toilets are under the seat, so you take off the cushion. First, you switch off the video. The big question is, what did we miss? What uh, do we underestimate? Uh, where are we not well prepared enough, in fact? Because that's what I'm trying to think all the time and anticipate. As soon as you leave the area of the Japanese coast, there will be no chance to go back. If you have an airplane that can fight against the winds better than this one, you can always turn back and return to where you started. With this one, you cannot. And I tell you, the Pacific, it's really long. I think in Solar Impulse, there will clearly be some physical points of no return. And at that point, you have to put your faith in the preparation. You also have the support of insurance companies like Swiss Re to help you get back on your feet in the event that something unfortunate happens. I think there is always a, a point where you can come back and recover after a disaster. And an insurance company obviously is a, a very essential partner. So every day, Swiss Re is involved with helping businesses and individuals take a risk in their everyday lives. This would include small landholders in Africa who have to take loans for seed and fertilizer, knowing that they could be struck by drought at any time. So what we do in microinsurance is we provide solutions to smallholder farmers that give them access to credit, give them access to risk management. With our solutions, we have a much more sustainable future. I think the middle of the Pacific can be thousands of kilometers from any point where a ship can come. So those are not the moments where we are going to be the most relaxed. We train on how to jump out. We train on how to survive in the oceans in a small life raft. If you have to get out, you open the door, this huge opening here, unstrap your harness and you jump and you have in the back of your seat the parachute and the life raft with you and you just jump with everything. Then once the parachute is open, you have to release the life raft so it lands before you and we are trained to do it even at night. When we train the worst, you know, that's also a way in fact not to be too anxious about the worst case scenario. As the pilots Andre and Bertrand are putting their lives on the line to fulfill their vision of a sustainable future, it is a risk that must be shared with friends and loved ones. We are not daredevils. 
We are explorers. It's very different. We are not happy when it's risky. I'm not afraid, uh, but I think I'm realistic about the risk. The around the world trip is full of experiences and of course it has its little fears. These are always at the back of the mind. When you think to a flight which could be dangerous, then you can imagine a lot of things. We have great support from the, uh, from the entire family. I know it's sometimes difficult for them. I think they know my passion about flying, so they are very strongly behind me. You always have to explain to your family why you want to do something. Not just show what you do, but why you do it. So they can identify also to a spirit, and they can also use that spirit for their own life. I'm in love with Bertrand, and Bertrand has this part of adventurer in himself. So I'm also in love with this part of him. We'll never forget the human aspect in our activities. We are also a company made of people, the dynamic of these people, the hope of these people. And if as a company we can share this hope with the people that we are insuring, we will have achieved a lot. Swiss is not only about big business. I mean, our clients are mainly corporations and organizations, but there are people behind that. What we do is about helping these people sleep at night. You could say insurance is the, the parachute of our clients, so it's the backup plan in case something unexpected happens. What Swiss Re essentially does is insuring people, corporates, and even countries. We help people better manage their risk, and if they do so, they have a brighter future. We will never fail because of problems of technology. The technology is mature. Maybe we will fail because the adventure is too difficult, because we'll have bad weather, because I don't know what. But it's part of life to take risk. The most dangerous thing in life is to take no risk. Swiss Re became a supporter of Solar Impulse because it's a combination between risk, innovation and courage. It's something which fits with our appetite in manner of risk. I think you need to measure the risk that you're taking, but I believe uh, life, life is risk. My biggest fear is not to fly in a solar-powered airplane. My biggest fear is to live in a world destroying the environment, depleting natural resources. This makes me really afraid. As a family man, my fear is that the next generations will have to deal with the consequences of climate change. Weather and natural catastrophe damages is something we are diversifying across the planet and really ensuring in, in huge chunks. We can only do so if we do understand the wider context in which we're doing our business. And one of part of that is that we take climate change very seriously. In climate change, there is two approaches. You can mitigate climate and you can adapt to the climate. With our solutions, we typically allow clients to have the financial resilience that is needed in a more volatile climate. Extreme weather can adversely affect our clients in multiple dimensions, either directly via physical loss to their properties or they can also have an interruption of their services. Similar to Solar Impulse, we monitor highly sophisticated computer programs which allow us to assess the risk for our clients. I think it is the responsibility of any major corporation to fight against climate change. When we speak of climate change, we should not always speak about all the problems, we should speak about the solutions. We have technological solutions like clean technologies and renewable energies. Solar Impulse is a symbol of what we can do with these technologies. With this project, we can inspire the young generation. And when I see kids coming here, children, students, and looking at this airplane you know, with shiny eyes, it's such a reward. Given the fact that our population is rising and that fossil fuels are running out, there's just no way around but to shifting to renewables. Swiss's role in a renewable energy project is really to cover the whole life cycle from the construction to operation phase for hydro, for solar and for wind. At Swiss Re, we look at the environmental, the social as well as the ethical dimensions of our business. We do not hesitate to refuse to give any kind of insurance cover to projects which are definitively destroying the environment. Why is it Swiss Re and not another company who is a partner for insurance? Because we have the same vision for the future and the same solutions for today that we want to implement. 
I'm extremely happy personally to be the one supporting these two extremely courageous gentlemen. Solar Impulse redefines what a plane can be. Solar Impulse really is a flagship project for a new technology. I am very proud about this partnership. I strongly believe in their message. I think it's a perfect match. We can do things which no other insurance company can do. I would like Swiss Re to be remembered for being a partner and a contributor to this amazing story.